Hello, it's Michael here from EduKids. Today, we're going to be taking a quick look at some of the new features in CodeKit version 4. In case you're new to EduKids or you haven't heard of CodeKit before, CodeKit is a free, simple, and easy to use drag and drop coding editor for Arduino. Using only colorful blocks and a very simple interface, you can create all sorts of amazing Arduino projects. The code from the blocks, the C++ code generates instantly to the right of the blocks and you can then either copy the code to your clipboard or you can download an INO file which will open easily in the Arduino application for further editing or to upload directly to your Arduino board. So let's get started. To, uh, to go to CodeKit, you can either use the, the link on our website, uh, the Educates website to launch web app, or you can go to the URL, which is educates.co forward slash code. The website has loaded the web app and we have a blank workspace. So I'm gonna go into the first, the first new feature in CodeKit version four, which is the ability to have for basically all input and output blocks, pins and states as variables. This is pretty cool. If I go into the input output section, you can see that some of these input output blocks just right off the bat look different. I'm gonna drag a simple uh, digital write block onto the workspace. You can see that it's outputting the code as we'd expect it to, um, the pin mode to set it up and the digital write. And like before, there are little drop downs for the pin number and the pin state. If I click on these, I can scroll through the different the uh, different pins, I can change these. I can change the state to just by clicking and using the drop downs. Now you can actually change these, this pin drop down using the, um, under the preferences modal, using this board selector. So say I have a, a board with more pins, say the Arduino Mega. Here we go. I'll click okay. Uh, that obviously has more pins than the 13 on the Uno. If I scroll down, you can see that we have all 46 of those digital pins and you can select any one of those. This is a tool meant to make it really easy for beginners to put in the right pins so that they can really only select pins from the ones available on the board. However, you might be wanting to do something more complex in your project. And in last update, we, we added this, this kind of feature into a new advanced mode where you got extra blocks with holes where you could stick, um, you know, the pin number as a variable or, or as a, a, a kind of statement or expression, if you like. However, you can just do this directly into the main digital write, uh, write block now. So for example, if I go into the math section and grab a, a simple number block, I can drag this into the pin section. And like with all blocks in CodeKit, um, the compatible blocks actually make um, similar shapes. I'm oh, sorry, the same shapes, kind of like cutouts. So you know that's that's a number one there. And you can see it's in the code here, it's putting the digital block right, I uh, sorry, digital right block, uh, it's rendering that correctly there. Okay, and we can change this number and it will update too. However, a more common use case is with variables. So let's try that out here. We have um, our typed variables over here. I'm gonna create a new integer variable to store our pin number. And I'm just gonna call this my pin. Click okay, and we now have a variable. We can set that up over here and I'm going to give it a value. We'll make this say 12 and then I'm going to call the variable and we're going to set that pin number to be that variable. And in fact, you can do the exact same thing for the state of the pin. We can create a variable. We're going to call it my state. Okay, we're going to set that. You can grab um, a a state block over here. We're going to change this to set that to high, just leave that as default. And then you can see that we have that angular block, which we can then pop in for the state. So that's what's new with the, the pins and states as variables feature in this update. I'm going to clear the workspace and we'll move over to looking at the function parameters, which is another cool feature. So under functions, there are kind of three basic blocks over here. And I'm gonna be just interested in the first one, though it does work for the other function blocks too. So I've dragged on a function and the first thing that we have here is a field, which is where we can put in the function name. And you can see over here, void do something. So that's uh, the name the function's gonna have in the code. 
I'm gonna call this my function just to show you how the renaming works and you can see it updates there. And whenever we want to call this function, I'm just gonna add a, you know, a simple uh, project setup and loop block here to show you where things are coming in. You can actually call the function you created by adding that, that block, so my function, and that will change as you change the function's name. However, you might want to pass a variable or a parameter into that function. So for example, if I make, uh, if we're making say a beeping sound, so I'm going to turn a buzzer that's on pin one to high and then low, and you know, have a one, uh, one second delay in between those two, for example. I might want to repeat that a number of times. So if I have a loop, and I stick those blocks inside there. This is currently repeating 10 times, but this this might actually change. Um, I might want to beep five times and then uh, three times. And I'll stick uh, some delays in here to kind of make that meaningful. So we want to repeat this a different number of times depending on in what context that function is called. So to add a parameter, just click on the block click on the mutator icon and then drag this input name block under this input section. And you can see instantly all three of these function blocks have updated. So it now says with input name X, and I'm gonna change this to beeps because this parameter is going to tell us the number of times that we're going to make the beeping sound. And you can see here, there's now an empty block where we can put in a number from the math section. Um, we can put a number in there to specify the number of beeps. The last thing we need to do is change this number in here, the one that says repeat uh, 10 times, we need to change that to be variable. So we can right click on the function and select create get beeps. Then this creates a little variable uh, block and we can pop that into repeat beeps times. And you can see it's updated in the function up here. So you can see, uh, here we go, count is less than beeps, brilliant. The last thing to do is give those values so we can call them with let's say a five and a 10. And now we have uh, a function with some different parameters, oh, sorry, with a parameter that can be um, given every time it's called. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna clear uh, this workspace and let's now talk about the new blocks that are in advanced mode. If you go up to the preferences modal and select advanced mode, that's a simple checkbox, let's cl click okay. Uh, there are actually additional blocks in some of the different categories, which the regular user won't use, but which advanced users will appreciate. Under this input output section, you can see that there's a pin mode block. So set pin and you can select your pin and select the mode. And this is gonna be useful for people who want to use the internal pull up resistors. Uh, because we've got the input pull-up option. And this is not normally available. Whenever a user wants to do, uh, wants to add a, uh, a digital or an analog read or write, we automatically add the pin mode into the setup for them. But people can do this themselves now um, and, and specify um, input pull-up as well, if they'd like. If you do want to put this in the setup, don't forget to wrap it in a setup or loop block like so. Okay, there are also some other blocks that are gonna be around here. We also have uh, the analog reference and this allows you to set your analog reference voltage. Now, we haven't yet connected this to the different boards. So not all of these are gonna be relevant to the board. You might have to read up on the um, Arduino do documentation to find out uh, which ones are available for you. So if you look in the different categories, there will be kind of more advanced blocks that Begin beginners won't won't have much use for, but which you which you may you may find quite helpful as an advanced user. So I'm going to clear clear these blocks. And the second last thing I'd like to talk about is the new block loader. In CodeKit 3, we had a we added a customizable toolbox. This allowed users to control what kinds of features were in their sidebar. And I think this was particularly useful for education users who in some circumstances wanted to limit the kind of blocks that users could use, uh, sorry, that their students could use in order to simplify the process for them. And, and, and this process has become 
uh, far more streamlined now. If you click on more blocks, you get the, the block loader modal and you can see that there are a few that aren't selected. So maybe I'll turn on messaging and text, click apply and you'll see that text and messaging have uh, appeared in the, in the sidebar here. You can see there's the messaging blocks, here's the, here's the text blocks and that's really how that works. Now onto the last new feature, and this isn't fully here yet. This is going to come in, we're currently on 3.0. This is, it's probably going to come in uh, 3.1 for CodeKit. Uh, but under preferences, you can see that we have uh, the themes, light and dark. We already had a dark theme in version three, but uh, in version 4.1 or so, we're going to have uh, magma. And beyond that, we're going to also have some other themes. So I think that's pretty cool. But that's about it for today's video. We've gone over some of the new features, including pins and states as variables, function parameters, new blocks in advanced mode, autosave code preference, new blocks loader, and the new themes that are coming. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this helpful. And now it's time for you to go out and create some cool projects with CodeKit. Enjoy.